Greetings, African people. Today, I want to do a question and answer, but it's not going to be very formal because I'm just winging it. I'm just remembering some questions that I've seen as I read comments from time to time. And some of the questions stick with me, but I don't have them in front of me. So I'm going to paraphrase or at least answer it based on my understanding of what that question is asking. Um, uh, this morning I read a question from a gentleman who starts out his statement by saying, as a white man who is into black women, maybe those are not his words, but that's what he means. Um, I'd like to tell you that it's not necessary to ask for forgiveness or reparation. It's just important for you to move on from it. And um, even though I, you know, do my channel and reaching out to my community, I really am open to hearing from everybody. Because I know that this whole battle between black and white is one that can end. I don't think it was the intention of the universe for us to be at each other's throat, but it is what it is. And so we deal with it and only way it can stop is if we stop it. Now, this white man who claims to be into black women have spoken and I have to respond to him. First of all, this is why I'm not with a white man. This is why I will not marry a white man because while I understand that there have been many white people in the struggles for liberation and freedom of black people, I understand that in the Underground Railroad that white people have risked life and limb to hide black people and help them into freedom. But these white folks are few in numbers. So some of these individuals love my culture. They'll go to my, my country and they'll enjoy themselves and they'll go from time to time they will ad abandon even comforts of their own countries and just come home and relax. And when they go to Jamaica, they are treated very well because black people, even though we have our issues, we know how to love and we know how to love even people who don't love us. So Mr. White Man, who is into black women, I'd like to answer your question. It's very easy for someone who doesn't have epistemic privileges to open their mouth and tell you what you're supposed to do or what you shouldn't do. Unless you have walked a mile in my shoes or the shoes of my ancestors, you will never fully understand what it means to us to lose culture, to lose language, to have memories that are so painful you see, individuals are asking me to move on and forget what happened to my four parents. I have to forget that individuals were rounded up like animals and put into ships and brought from Africa to America, to England, to wherever slavery existed, um, to work for free, to be raped, to be tortured, to be abused in the worst way. And every person who has or ever gone through this kind of subjugation, at some point I've heard an apology, at some point I've received some kind of retribution um, for what has happened to them. The Jewish people are an example, the First Nation to a lesser extent, but they too are beginning to get acknowledgement for their suffering and their pain. And yet as African people, we are told to move on. Recently, we were offered a prison in Jamaica by the Prime Minister in England. And one of the things he said is, we are friends now and uh, we need to move on. And I think that is such an insult. And I think it's very hypocritical of white people. Let me tell you why it's hypocritical for you to open your mouth and tell me that I should move on. Who are you to tell me that I should move on? When did you ever move on from anything that has wrong happened to you? Let's look at... Um, the gay movement, gay 
bisexual, transgendered community. They have fought for rights and freedoms over the years and they never stop fighting. People have killed people who are gay or homosexual. Many people have suffered because of their orientation, but individuals did not give in to the idea that they should move on. And now what we see is a gay community that is strengthened from strength to strength, a movement that is now become one that in some ways have become oppressive to some people. So while I am in support of the gay community, sometimes they actually do things to other folks that uh, other folks used to do to them. Because now what happens is you silent the world and people have to be very careful about what you say or what you do. Do I have the right to tell a person who is in one of these community that it's time for them to move on? Isn't that an insult and disrespectful for me to tell somebody who feel like they have been oppressed that they should move on. Let's take a look at the justice system, for example. If someone's home is broken into and when these thieves or these criminals come into your household, they rape, they kill, they torture, they steal. Do I have a right to tell the individual who suffered this kind of invasion that they should move on. They shouldn't report it to the police. They shouldn't go to the court system. They shouldn't go after those who have done this to them to prosecute them. They should just move on. Do you get the point that I am making? The hypocrisy? Why is it okay for um, individuals to uh, retaliate when individuals have violated you? So you have all these terrorists in the world who for one reason or the other, whether it be political or religious, who go into your countries, or even if they're not in your own country, they have gone to um, your embassies or gone to places um, that represent where you come from and uh, bomb or terrorize or affect individuals' lives. Why don't you say, these things happened to me, I'm going to remove, move on. Why is it okay for you re to retaliate for you not just retaliate but for you to go and make laws and do things to protect yourself because it's the right thing to do because we all should enjoy certain freedoms in life that allow us to live our true lives be our best selves whether that be gay or transgendered or black or what ever equality why is there unions to protect the workers right why do we have these things why don't you just tell the worker go to work in any condition unsafe or otherwise and uh if you are violated on the job if you're harassed sexually harassed on the job if someone is bullying you on the job just move on do you get the point mr white man who is into black women that what you're saying to me is just ridiculous that you're asking me to turn a blind eye and forget what happened to my ancestors forget about what is happening even to black people in this day and time just forget about it no i won't forget about it because i'm saying that if you're um from a culture or a country that have done things like the enslavement of african people and have used their strength and their suffering and their pain and tears to build your country you owe them something and i'm not saying you should call every black person and hand them money but there's ways how you can help and alleviate the suffering of black people because you know that they worked very hard through death and suffering and hard labor to build these communities why must i forget it why should i forget why for should i forget that somewhere down the road one of my ancestors one of my lady woman had to give birth in the field. And as soon as she's done giving birth to a child, she straps that child onto her back and go back to pick cotton. Why should I forget that while my great, 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 great grandfather was working to build your economies, you took his wife in front of him, your son, a young boy who could be her son raped her in front of her husband why the hell should i forget that huh 
it's so easy to tell people how they should move on from something that doesn't affect you so white man who is into black women i would never marry you and most white men that are involved with black women don't truly understand you see you want pum pum you have this obsession with black woman pum pum and you think that's love that's not love you can't truly love me until you truly understand who i am now for those people who are into into their interrelationship or inter whatever racial relationships it's working for them i don't want to criticize people because love is love I'm just saying I personally couldn't be with a white man because you don't understand my struggles. You don't understand my pain. And I think at some point in life when things are happening that is upsetting me, I don't know if I can be politically correct around you. That's why you couldn't be my man. Now, there are a lot of white men who are actually really into black women for one reason or the other. But I noticed these white men when they go with black women, it's the most beautiful black woman that they go out with. But white women, black women are different. There are a lot of black women and a few will marry older white men because of their money. But the majority of the black women I see dating white men, sometimes I wonder what it is. Because, you know, love is much deeper than the skin and it's more complex than just what you see. But some black women actually just go out with some white men because they feel inferior. And in some ways they hate themselves so much, they feel if they marry a white man and have some white babies, that's going to make them important or whatever. And so you marry some white men and I've seen it even on this YouTube journey. Black women marry white men and man abandoned them with all kinds of children they're left with a ton load of kids to support and raise by themselves and yet every day you see these black men online talking about black women are useless and have all these babies now that black woman that that white man gave i don't even want to say the number of kids but he left her with a number of children and he's gone on with his life and chances are he's gone on with a white woman and she's left with these kids that black woman probably would not have dated a black man and uh, she probably want to go out with the next white man or some other person other than a black man. And I think she should stick to that because now that you've been abandoned and rejected, you can't come back now and expect a black man to take you and your white children that you wanted. You're asking me to forget what happened to my four parents like their experience doesn't matter it's okay to move on from it but gentleman mr white man it's hard to move on from something if it's always in your face so if there's changes in our society today you can find a way to heal but if you're put in front of a table and told that this is about reconciliation where you get to talk about what happened to you and then you forgive the individuals who've done it to you and then watch them do it to you all over again that is not a way for us to move on. The countries in the world who are the leaders and the dominant forces in the societies that we live in owe some kind, some kind of debt and they must repay. And so when people continuously, black people continuously ask for repatriation it doesn't heal those wounds but it's just their way of saying that we're suffering because of what you have done so mr white man no i'm not going to move on from it you can move on all you like and you can endure your jungle fever all you want and pretend that you love a black woman but if you really truly loved a black woman you would never ask her to forget that which makes her who she is, the essence of who she is, which is African. And everything that happened to her four parents um, is something, is a legacy that she carries with her. White man, if you want me to move on from what your ancestors did to mine, 
then what you have to do is when other people come into your lives and abuse you and do bad things to you, you move on from it too. And then we'll be equal. Show me your side of forgiveness. Show me your ability to move on. And then I will learn from you. Because there's a lot of things that as a black person, I can learn from a white person. You have demonstrated it time and time and time again about your love for self and your love for each other in many regard. Now, I'm not saying that white folks all love each other and you're living this kind of, you know, serenity. God, that's far from the truth. At the end of the day, um, Europeans were fighting amongst each other. They continue to fight amongst each other. It's just that you have the opportunity. When the expansionist time came, um, our movement, veered into full gear you understood how you could go out and you could go fight against other peoples it's not because you don't fight against each other you don't have your own problems but you have learned something that the black community have not learned and that there is unity in strength and so when you come together as a group you are able to do great things and bad things too i'm not going to move on and i don't suggest any of your people to move on from anything that you perceive to be bad be blessed everybody think on these things